Welcome to another one of my beginning watercolor pencil tutorials. This time I'm going to be drawing and painting some watermelon. I'm going to sketch out two simple shapes. One is going to look like a slice of pizza and the other one's going to be a half circle. Super easy. I'm going to take one of my green watercolor pencils. I'm going to list all the colors in my description, uh, but this is kind of like a grass green and I'm going to go out on the other outer edges and put a nice dark crisp edging on it and then I'm going to shade in um, some green just a little bit in probably a quarter of an inch I'm going to shade in I'm now going to start adding the red or the pink color of the watermelon and I'm going to shade periodically and randomly. I don't want to put in a solid block of color. I want paper showing through. I'm going to try to create that watermelon texture where some areas of the watermelon are a little bit more pink and some are a little bit more vibrant red. But this is my first layer. Um, and so I'm gonna go back over this area with another red after I finish blending it in and it dries. Uh, but I want you to notice that I am leaving a halo of white between the gr uh, green and the red uh, because on watermelon, the there is a little bit of that faded white that separates the red part of the melon and then the green skin of the melon. Okay, now I'm gonna take a small round paintbrush and some water, and I'm gonna start blending out that green line that I sketched in earlier. I'm using a kind of a scrubbing or a round motion because I want that green line to fade into the white area, and I want it to be the darkest on the edge where the watermelon skin is. Okay, I'm now going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to blot up some of that green. I want it to have a more natural look. I don't want a perfect uh, green stripe where the watermelon skin is. And I'm going to continue on the other piece as well. I'm going to use that kind of scrubbing or circular uh, motion with my paintbrush. I don't want to paint back and forth. I want it to look a little bit more natural um, and faded. And then I'll also use a paper towel to blot up the edges to make it look a little bit more natural. Okay, it's uh, time to start uh, working on the red and the pink area of the watermelon. I'm going to use some paint brush strokes that kind of go back and forth. And I want some variation in my color. I want texture in my color. This is uh, my first layer, which I mentioned before. And I'm going to want that pink uh, edge to kind of fade into that white halo that I left before. So I'm being very careful not to give it a harsh line around the edges where it gets closer to the skin of the watermelon. I'm just gonna keep blending. I'm using kind of circular motions or back and forth, but I'm not taking large paint strokes back and forth. I'm using water in very small areas. I'm trying to be mindful of where I want my pigment to go and not flattening it out and leaving some areas more saturated and some areas more faded where the white paper is showing through. I'm gonna use uh, my paper towel to blot up 
um, some areas and to create some textures and make sure that I don't have any harsh lines or harsh brush strokes so it looks more natural, more like the texture of a watermelon. So here's a little trick. If you need more pigment on an already wet painting, you can take your paintbrush with a little bit of water and get the pigment straight off your watercolor pencil. Uh, this is a great trick if your paper is still wet and you just need to add a little bit more pigment to an area. Or you can wait for the painting to dry and then just put another layer of watercolor pencil right on top of the areas that you need after it's dried. You can layer as many times as you want, uh, letting each layer dry until you create the desired color, or saturation, or texture that you want. Okay, it's time to start adding seeds to my watermelon slices. I'm gonna take my black watercolor pencil, dip it in water for a few seconds, and start drawing my watermelon seeds. The reason I'm, I'm dipping it in water first is because I want a nice, sharp, saturated uh, drawing when I, do, when I add the seeds. And this is a great technique for this type of drawing. Um, I'll be able to get a few seeds drawn at a time before I have to re-dip my pencil in the water and then I'll blot off any extra water on a paper towel and just keep adding seeds. When you're drawing anything natural like fruit, and in this case watermelon, you want to make sure that you don't have perfect rows. You want it to be more natural and a little bit more random. When you open up a watermelon, you don't see perfect rows of seeds and it's going to be a little bit more sporadic and random across the piece. I'm just about finished with my watercolor painting of watermelon and I hope that you learned something today and I hope that you enjoyed my video. Thank you so much.